Good evening. Welcome to New Horizon Baptist Church. I am Pastor Paul, and we are here tonight once again for our weekly Bible study. And I am glad that you have allowed us to come into your various homes or whatever place, wherever places you may be. And we are here to get into the Word of God. But before we do that, let us go before our good God in prayer. Father and our God, we thank you once again for granting us the opportunity that we might gather together for the purpose of the study of your word. We come tonight knowing and realizing that if it had not been for your grace, we would not be here. We ask now that as you move in our midst, that if you search our hearts, whatever you see that shouldn't be, remove it so that we might be able to receive what word you have in store for us tonight that we might grow and develop and become just the kind of Christians you so desire and be pleased with. We ask now that you will remove all stumbling blocks. And as we open up our hearts, it is our prayer and our desire that we be receptive unto your teachings. For it is in Jesus' name we pray as we seek your anointing. Let every heart say amen. We have been dealing with uh, in our Bible study a series entitled The Faith Walker. The Faith Walker. And our theme text has been based on our theme text taken out of Paul's writings in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 where Paul declares, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We have covered a great deal of material. However, on last week, we started out talking about how to obtain faith, how to obtain faith. And we used as our text Paul's writings found in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, where Paul declares, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We took the time and pulled all the necessary bullets found in that text, and we then got into talking about learning how to hear God's word. And our focus in this particular area was that I was laying out uh, some very critical points that might be helpful in enhancing our ability to be able to hear clearly God's word. We have talked about two of those areas. The very first one that we discussed was that I was sharing with you the importance of us hearing God's word expectantly. And that is, it is uh, talked about coming with an attitude of expecting God to share his word with us and at the same time we come in with the attitude of expectation not so much on something we desire but that God will provide for us answers and guidance through his word we left uh, step number one in dealing with hearing with expectation or with expectancy and we dealt with our second major area which happened to have been quietly quietly and what we shared there was the importance of knowing what it was going to take for us as believers to get to that level in our relationship with God that when the word is being presented and that is even from being taught or, or being preached, that we get the attitude of understanding the importance of being still so that our objective is to get to know God. And the only way we can get to know God is to get into his word so that we, we might leave with a clear understanding. On tonight, we want to continue with our steps and we want to look now at a third major area that I think is extremely critical 
as we prepare to go deeper in how we as Christians can go about uh, establishing the idea of hearing God's word effectively. And this third step is what we want to call patiently. We must hear God's word patiently. What we must be clear on is that first, it takes time and it takes quietness for us as Christians to prepare to listen to God's word. That's, that's uh, so critical and so important that we hear him, but we don't just want to get in a hurry. I want you to listen to what the psalmist challenges us about in Psalm 37, verse 7. The psalmist says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Looking at this particular passage of scripture, the first thing that I want you to take note of, if you are looking in your Bibles, you will recognize, listen to the phrase of how the psalmist begins the statement. The first thing that the psalmist challenges us on is that he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. This step, of what I call godly trust, that is godly trust in God, literally goes beyond uh, simply sitting quietly. Let's go a little deeper in what the psalmist is actually saying if it goes deeper than just sitting quietly. We have to pay uh, close attention to, first of all, the verb rest in that statement. The verb rest there simply means be silent or to be still. Notice now, the psalmist is very detailed on how this rest should be accomplished. The psalmist declares that we are to rest in the Lord. Why is this so important that the psalmist would declare not just rest, but rest in the Lord? Which implies to just simply rest is one thing, but to rest in the Lord is something totally different. And the reason why resting in the Lord is uh, extremely important, I want you to listen to this. Rest is the highest condition of man. That means that we do our best when we are uh, rested, when we are physically at the level we need to be. But just because you are very well rested does not imply what's found in the text. What's found in the text is that we are to rest in the Lord. So let's, let's talk for a moment about what is this rest. First of all, when the psalmist says rest in the Lord, he has reference to what is called the balance of the mind. You see, when your mind is at peace, when your mind is settled, you can better understand what it takes and what it means to rest in the Lord. Not only that, but if there's going to be balance in the mind, then there has to also be balance of feeling. And this is important because oftentimes, if the mind is troubled, it's an indication that our feelings are out of whack. So 
there has to be the concept of a harmony of the inner being with the outer life. That means what you really are and who you are must be looked at inwardly first so that who you are inwardly shows up outwardly. So that word rest in that statement simply implies satisfaction. It indicates silence. It has reference to absolute reliance. Or let me put it like this. It means perfect peace. That does not mean that you obtain perfect peace simply because God has answered your prayer or granted whatever you are asking him to do. This perfect peace, it comes about when you recognize what it means to rest in the Lord. So the psalmist declares, and watch how he goes a little bit further. He says, and wait patiently for him. It is what I call vitally important that we know and understand the term patient in the text. Patience is not complacency. Patience is simply endurance in action. Patience is endurance in action. In other words, patience is simply forbearance in suffering. It means forbearance under suffering and endurance in the face of of adversity. So the key here is not being necessarily removed from situations as much as it is what you do while you are in a particular situation. That Greek word, there's a Greek word that is translated patience, which has reference to in this text, it relates to things. In other words, when you talk about patience, the Bible focuses on the issue with two concepts in mind. Patience as it relates to things and patience as it relates to people. So here in our text, we're centering it, the thought on Things It may be described as this. It may be described in essence as the quality that enables a person to be patient in tribulation. Let me take you to Paul's writings in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It is here that Paul says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Now let me connect all of what we've said thus far as to what this whole idea is about. I'm trying to get us to understand we have to be careful when we are seeking to hear God's word. We can't be in a hurry and we cannot treat those moments when the word is being presented with the attitude that if we get in a hurry, we may overlook or fail to hear what God has in store. So you, we got to develop this spirit of patience that we can wait on God to make his moves, especially if we are seated at the table waiting on him to feed us. I want you to listen to this. Christians must be patient 
in hearing God's word and patient in receiving a blessing from God's word. If you are in a hurry, and a lot of times this is what happens when we are in the presence of the word of God. We are watch walker, watch, watchers. And what I mean by that, if, if God's going to give us an answer to a situation, we got to be patient enough so that when we receive that word, we would have received what God has in store for us. Now, the reason this is important is simply because of this. First, God would not tell us some things instantaneously. What I'm trying to get us to grasp is God may desire to speak to us over a period of time through several times of teaching, several things within Scripture. It's not just going to happen because you showed up the church one time and God pours everything you need at that one moment that you came to church. No, we got to understand it is divinely necessary and needed that we understand God's not going to unfold all the answers, all the mysteries instantaneously. Secondly, we must be willing to listen to him patiently. And we're in an age where everything, majority of what we want, we get it when we want it. So we have a tendency to even come before him in the body of Christ, in worship, at any given time with the attitude, I want what I want and I want it now. But we got to have the attitude that if I'm going to listen and listen patiently, then I am saying to God, however long it takes for you to bless me, I am willing to listen patiently. And then thirdly, simply because these times in which we have to wait patiently and listen to God may draw out or stretch out our faith. That's critical because when we don't come before God with the right level of faith, God then uh, moves to speak to us sometimes over a period of time in order to draw us or draw out and stretch our faith. And our faith can become stretched based on how much word we're receiving as well as how much we understand what we're hearing. The whole purpose of listening to God patiently sometimes is not because God is short on blessing us. It's not because God has to go and work out how he intends to bless us. But a lot of times he stretches our faith because what we are asking for, our faith is not on the level of the request. So he has to stretch our level of faith so that when he answers our request, it will be based on our level of faith. Faith. I want you to listen to this. You can't get a quick fix through a quick hearing of God's word. And let, let me take a moment and, and, and kind of explain in detail what I'm talking about. You got to be very careful as Christians that you don't have the attitude that you can ease up in church on a particular Sunday at any given time or at any area of time where the word is being taught and you are so caught up in wanting to get what you want to get, you are actually 
you have a quick fix mentality. And that doesn't work when it comes to how we approach or deal with God. Simply because God does not deal with quick fix. He doesn't want us to get fixed in a quick manner because we are oftentimes become confused in who it is that is doing the blessing. So it is extremely important that we learn how to listen to God's word patiently. But looking back now at what the psalmist was sharing with us, look at the remaining balance of the statement. And it is there that the psalmist says, do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Simply because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Now that's how the psalmist ends that verse. This implies that we seek to hear God's word with uh, an incorrect motive. The idea is that we are only seeking to listen to God because we become jealous of what we see somebody else with. Therefore, it's really you're not listening. You, you're listening with the wrong motive. You see, jealousy and envy is a sin. And we have to be very careful that we don't pay attention to God's word based on our personal desires, our personal wishes. We must focus our attention on the Lord and not on what we see other folk with. Because a lot of times, if we are not careful, we'll end up, coming before God, and I mentioned this on last Wednesday uh, about the possibility of using our approach as if we just simply going shopping and we're just going to put whatever's on our list in our little personal buckets. Got to be very careful with that. So the psalmist wants us to come before the Lord and rest in the Lord. That means if we're going to wait patiently, I don't just be patient in what he says to me, but I'm also patient throughout the fulfilling of the process of whatever the text reveals. That means that there are times God will speak to us, but I got to be patient enough to know that God has my best interests at heart and I got to wait. I got to wait personally on God to work some things out in my life. I want to take you to a, a, another passage of scripture that might shed a little more light on the matter. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Isaiah says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here we see in this text the results, the results of waiting on the Lord. That means that if we understand the power of patience, the power of waiting. In this passage of scripture, he tells us what the end result would be. But once again, let's back up and look at a few things. That word wait, that the word wait in the text here comes from a Hebrew word which simply means to bind together by twisting. Let me say that again. The word means to bind together by twisting. And here's the sense of what the concept is. Here is the idea. 
it really, in essence, if we are really to wait on the Lord, then we will be constantly, and here's the concept, if we wait properly, then we will be constantly seeking his face. Being bound together, we will be totally desirous of carrying out his will. And that goes back to what we mentioned earlier by the psalmist in regards to uh, waiting patiently on the Lord. It doesn't mean just sitting quietly and doing absolutely nothing. And I will go in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes into a, a, an area that I'm hoping that will um, kind of uh, filter our way of thinking so that we can get out of this attitude of thinking waiting on God or being patient is just a matter of sitting down and doing absolutely nothing. The idea here in Isaiah's text, waiting upon the Lord is not merely saying the words. I want us to understand that. But it is looking to the passing of time. It's not dealing with, I'm just sitting here waiting on time to pass. That's, you got the wrong concept when, when he says, uh, they that wait on the Lord. The waiting ensnares what I call careful inspection. Careful inspection by the Holy Spirit. That means while we are waiting on the Lord, the Holy Spirit, you invite him to search your heart, to search within you. He will make us, this is the, he's the one who molds us into his image. So the ultimate objective is that if I am impatient, that means then that I am not being molded properly. Because when I wait on the Lord, I am giving up my will, my desires, my sense of direction, things I want. And I am literally saying to the Lord, you take full control. Notice now how Isaiah, and I know many of you have heard this passage of scripture uh, over the years. But listen, listen, listen to how Isaiah uh, concludes in the result. He says, he declares, shall renew their strength. Um, that word renew in the text is a powerful term. And it simply implies springing up and going forward. Springing up and going forward forward not with our head hung down not looking sad but going forward with the attitude and with the understanding God got me has me covered God's got my back no matter what happens it is God's plan God's got he's he's going to lay out exactly what needs to be done so I can't walk around uh, with my head hung down in a depressed state we got to understand, I mentioned it to you earlier, work on who you supposed to be inwardly. And then through the power and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, your second objective is to bring the person on the inside and let that be revealed on the outside. And then he closes in that verse by using the example of an eagle. And this is the way I like to summarize the whole concept. And what Isaiah wants us to recognize is that eaglets do not stay in a certain state always. E they become eagles at some point. And here's the point. Listening to God's word patiently enables you as a believer to understand the more you are patient in hearing the word of God, then the more God will allow you to develop and become the kind of 
person he has planned for your life. So we got to learn as Christians not to get in a hurry. Don't have a McDonald's or Burger King mentality that you just pull up in the church and at any point in time the word is taught or the word is preached and you want to hit a little button and get what you need and pull off. It doesn't work that way. There are times you have to hear the same scripture over and over and over again. Not because you didn't hear it the first time, but simply because what God is doing is making sure that the text itself is implemented in your life, in your daily walk. Now, let's move to the fourth step. The fourth step step do not lose sight now of the steps the fourth one is attentively that is listening to God requires a person's undivided attention it is very hard to listen to God's word if he does not have our un divided attention now this is extremely important because um, we see this and have seen this and I have over the 40 some years of pastoring uh, down through the years that people can be present on the pew body wise but their mind their mannerisms indicate that they are literally absent It is very frustrating trying to talk to someone who is not listening. And this is one of the areas that really bothers me on Sundays or any time the word is is taught. It's funny. We'll sit and listen to all aspects of the song. And the moment the, the, the preacher or the teacher gives the text, we are moving. And that says to me how we evaluate where we uh, are connected. You are more connected with the singing than we are with the word of God. We can speak all we wish. Listen to me good. But the person is not willing to commit to the process to give total attention and concentration this is very much needed Um, we got to get to that point that we understand you cannot be the kind of person who doesn't give God your total attention attention and concentration depend also upon your mental and physical condition. Mm. That's whoever, all of us, that has a lot to do with our ability at that moment in time on listening. And that means you can be present, sitting on the pew, and yet absent. Why is this so important? Sometimes, and you got to get this, sometimes people are not always ready to listen just because we are ready to speak. Sometimes, if we were reverse it, we're quick to want to speak, but we don't take the time to listen. Sometimes, listening to the gospel won't occur until certain needs are met. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Listen to this. It is hard to listen to the word of God when you are hungry, tired, or feel unwelcome. See, the body of Christ in a sense, sets the tone for opportunities for people to listen, okay? 
if we don't do outreach properly, people who are in need don't hear what needs to be heard because we haven't done any outreach to make sure that we have brought the God that we serve into their lives so that they will be able to hear. And, and this, this really bothers me oftentimes because uh, we don't really realize that we like to talk about how good God is and what God is able to do. But when it's time for us to put into action the God that we serve, we back up. We back away. Let me give you a very good example. One Sunday morning, a man entered the church and sat down near the front with his hat on. Noting the man, one of the ushers spoke to him, asking him if he knew and forgot to remove his hat. Yes, the man replied, I realized I have my hat on. I've been coming to this church for two months. And this is the only way I could get anyone to speak to me. That meant that that man had been coming to that church. And no, no individual on the inside, members of that church, took the time. To welcome the man which affected his ability to hear. Simply because what he may have been hearing didn't line up with what the believers should have been doing. A writer once made this statement. If a pupil is not giving attention, he's absent. That means then that if we come in the presence of whomever is giving us the word of God and we show no attention, you might want to walk away and say you were present, your name was listed, but in actuality you were really absent. This is why the message of the gospel has somehow or another lend itself to being received. All because so many times we are present in body but absent in mind and spirit. We must understand that listening may be the most unselfish of all the activities that takes place. Listening, as simple as it might sound, it starts with Jesus' difficult command found and recorded in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. And it is here in that passage of Scripture that Jesus simply says, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. A writer by the name of John Drakeford, listen to what he says. He wrote in his book, The Awesome Power of the Listening Heart. His statement was simply this. Those who learn to listen, listen to learn. Those who learn to listen, listen to learn. I want to stay there for a minute because so often we listen, but we listen to receive what it is we are after. And you got to be careful that you don't listen just to receive the end result. Because sometimes in listening, he will speak on how we can better handle what we're getting ready to receive. 
so you don't lose the blessing quickly or abuse the blessing quickly because oftentimes sometimes what he gives to us is not really for us sometimes we are blessed with certain things to be a blessing to somebody else Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 1 and 2 Solomon tells us in essence what our purpose should be when we come into the Lord's presence. Listen to what he says. Walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools for they do not know what they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Notice now, notice the first thing Solomon uh, declares. He tells us, walk prudently when you go to the house of the Lord. Let's talk about that for a moment. First of all, to walk prudently means to be reverent. It proceeds with reverence. In other words, check your walk. And when we talk about walk, we're not talking about your literal walk. We are talking about uh, your life. The attitude that you as a person have on life. And notice now that, that Solomon mentions the house of God. So when he says the house of God, I'm very well aware that you might have instantly start thinking, I haven't been to the church in a few minutes. That, that, that's not what we're talking about. When he says house of God, he refers to the presence of God. So no matter where you are, if you are in his presence, that's what Solomon has reference to. Solomon goes on and declare and draw near. Listen to what he says, and draw near to hear, which simply means to obey. So your whole purpose in hearing, okay, the word of God is, is that your objective is to obey, not to switch wheels. You don't tell God to sit his wheel down and you push your desires. Solomon goes on and says, rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know they do evil. And we can easily understand the concept simply because of Cain, according to scripture, offered up the sacrifice of fools, according to Genesis chapter 4, verses 3, 4, and 5. For the word says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord rejected, I mean, re re respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain. And his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance failed. All I need us to understand, all I'm trying to get us to, to grasp is, it is imperative. It is of a divine necessity that we give God our undivided attention. Now that we have discussed in these last two Wednesday nights how to obtain faith. And we recognize and explain clearly now 
that this whole idea is based on Paul's writings in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And we establish the fact that Paul says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we already know and already understand that the ultimate objective in increasing an individual's faith comes through hearing God's word. Then I laid out four important points, four steps that we as Christians must take in consideration when we are seeking to hear the word of God. These four steps helps us to better increase our hearing ability. First, we talked about the fact that we must hear expectantly. Then secondly, we said we must hear quietly. Then thirdly, we said we must hear patiently. And then fourthly, we must hear attentively. Now we want to discuss three ways, three ways by which we can obtain faith beyond what Paul says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. These three ways are all born out of what Paul presents in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. In fact, these three ways are what I call the school of faith. The school of faith. Three simple ways. According to, and, and what I found amazing uh, is how God approaches how throughout scripture uh, this idea of faith is dealt with. If you know or if you are a Bible reader, according to Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the disciples said something to Jesus. One day, and I'm going to read the passage. It says, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased and one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Notice now in that passage of scripture that the disciples ask Jesus, Lord, teach us to to pray, but you won't find it in Scripture that they ever ask Jesus to teach them to believe. However, another puzzling thing, throughout the Gospels, throughout the Gospels, in Jesus dealing with his disciples, he constantly corrected all of them regarding their lack of faith than any other shortcomings that they might have experienced. I find that strange that they ask, teach us to pray, but they never ask Jesus to teach them to believe. Now the question is, why? Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is this. It is easy to pray, but it is hard to believe. It's easy to pray, but it is hard to believe. And the reason why is because of this. Listen to this carefully now. Praying is specific action. Faith is an attitude. Say that again. Praying is specific action. Faith is an attitude. It is always easier. Listen to me now. It is always easier to act than to be. Always easy to act 
than to be. Action is the work of a moment. Becoming is the work of a lifetime. Totally two different things. Totally two different things. One is the work of a moment and the other is the work of a lifetime. So the question that must be dealt with now, how is it possible for us as believers to understand that Paul says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There are three areas I want to quickly drop in your spirit before I let you go so that you might understand it is more than just us hearing the word, but we all as believers have a divine obligation. The very first one that I, I want us to make sure we understand, and that is that first faith is taught. Let me say that again. Faith is taught. This concept is done through a textbook or it can be done through uh, uh, the teacher, the instructor, writing uh, necessary information on the board. This implies that the person is learning uh, through a concept or through some form of theory okay so now we know that faith can be taught but the problem is when this takes place at this stage we understand that it is with our minds but it does not go any further than that that's sort of the idea that faith is taught then Secondly, faith is caught. It's caught. This is based on seeing an individual living faith. That means that the person is living by faith. And you see them practice faith daily in their walk with God and other believers. So this means that the you can literally see the fruit of faith as well as the benefits of faith. But you got to keep in mind, it is still on the outside. Now, this is an area why it's important that we as Christians don't have the kind of relationship that we talk a good game, but our walk doesn't line up with our talk. In other words, if faith can be caught, then I got to walk a certain way daily so that others around me can see the fruit of my faith walk. In other words, I can't walk right, can't walk shouting, and then complain at the same time. I can't walk in faith and, and my face look like a sour lemon. The third and final concept, and we'll go into detail uh, next week, if God is willing. Not only is faith taught, not only is faith caught, but faith is wrought. Now li listen to what I need you to grasp. When I use this term, that word simply means fashioned or formed. So what happens is, during this stage, God comes into the picture as our master trainer. Our master trainer. This means that God will sometimes put you in difficult places like the children of Israel were at the Red Sea. I want you to just write the passage of Scripture down. I was going to read it, but I'm not going to do that. Exodus chapter 14. 
beginning with verse 13 all the way down to verse 18. And here's the deal. There they are at the Red Sea. And there are moments God will allow us to be dropped in difficult places simply because you have to have a choice. You either sink or you swim. You sink or you swim. The idea is that we are forced to believe not through the teacher, not through an example, but through ourselves as how we encounter the situation. And what it is is that the situation brings to reality the reality of God. We get to see who God really is when we are in difficult places. We didn't see it when it was taught. We didn't see it when somebody else caught it. But we'll see it when God drops us off. Because sometimes as students, we show up, but we don't take good notes. We don't allow what we've written down to, to take seat in our spirit. So we have to be placed in difficult situations just to get our hearing. Here's the point. Don't just hear. Do something about your hearing. Put into practice what you hear. Before I go, I need to tell you something about this third stage. When we look at this third stage regarding the fact that faith is wrought, it is the most painful time with our walk with God. I wish I could end it in a better than that. But the point is, it is a time of proving God to be true. And this is what situations will do for you. God will drop us off in a tough spot. And you have to stand there and observe the hell you are catching and figure out if God is real or if he's not real. And it's amazing. There are times we don't get it no other way. It's almost like some children, uh, all of them are not alike, but there are those who every now and then you have to spank their behinds. And when you spank them, they got to understand the reasoning behind getting spanked. Because just to tear a child's butt up without fully explaining why, they will never recognize the wrong that they've done. So this is what happens with trouble. Trouble has a way of putting us in an awkward position to make us see the reality of God. But I pray that all of us will be just, just simply be good students of the word in our relationship with Christ. But never forget, if you are dealing with a tough situation, if trouble surrounds you, it just might be that God is working on your faith in him so that you will understand this is not the time to whine, to complain, to grumble, to throw in the towel, to quit. No, you got to hang in there. And the more you hang in there, the more God will unfold the reality of who he is. I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that uh, I've said something uh, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that, that has uh, rested in your spirit. But just keep in mind, these are areas that should help us to understand how we are to obtain faith. And keep in mind, be careful if your request outweigh your faith. It just might be that you might need to stop requesting and focus on listening so that the more you listen to God's word, the stronger your faith becomes. And the stronger your faith becomes, you then become capable of receiving what God has in store. I pray you've been blessed. I don't know about you, but I have. May God keep you. And please, ma'am, and please, sirs, stay safe. And I'm also saying to the New Horizon Church family, let us stay prayerful for one another. It is extremely important 
that you might be doing fine right now, but there may be somebody, and there's always somebody, just pray that God will continue to bless and keep all of us. May God bless you.